In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, Lord welcome to Mass this evening. Good news for you. Lent is over now. Uh, Lent ended when we made the sign of the cross. We've now entered into the Easter Triduum, the three days uh, which will lead us to the celebration of Easter. And tonight we celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper. We remember Jesus coming together with his disciples and the institution of the Eucharist. We remember the gift of the priesthood also to the church. And the things which unite those, bind them together and enable them to be at the purposes of God is the command of the Lord to wash each other's feet. And that's normally a part of our liturgy, but it can't happen here tonight because I can't just wash my own feet. That's already been done once today, you'll be pleased to know. But hopefully we have a reflective um, little video to play if all the technical stuff works properly, um, which might just help you in your own homes to reflect a little on the meaning of the washing of the feet. We'll see. We've had technical problems all day, so let's just hope that that, that that will work. It's quite a beautiful little piece that's been put together. And so we're gathered for prayer. We're gathered uh, as Christians, and let's not forget that we're gathered with the whole of the church tonight. That We are um, not just individuals at home, um, but we are, um, we are one family, and Let's that be the, uh, the important thing that binds us together. So as always when we begin the Mass, we ask for the Lord's gifts of healing and of peace in our hearts and in our minds and in our world. And let's remember those who perhaps would have wished to be uh, able to worship with us tonight, but who are working, especially those who are working within the NHS at the moment. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first month of your year. 
speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbour, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month, when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put put on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily, it is a Passover in honour of the Lord. That night I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? the cup of salvation i will raise i will call on the lord's name the blessing cup that we bless is a communion with oh precious the lord is the death of his faithful your servant lord your servant am i you have loosened my bonds the blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of christ a thanksgiving sacrifice i make I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. from the first letter to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, the cup after memorial of me. 
Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Acclamation. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you, says the Lord. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to. It was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were in, his, in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from the table, removed his outer garment, and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, No one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That's why he said, Though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done for you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. When Pope Francis was first elected and took his place as, as a Bishop of Rome, one of the first things that he did on his first Maundy Thursday, um, he went to celebrates the Mass of the Lord's Supper at a place called Castel del Marmo, which is a prison complex just outside of the city of Rome on Monte Mario. And there he celebrated the Mass, and in the course of the Mass, he carried out the washing of the feet except this time with a difference. He didn't just wash the feet of priests or deacons or even of Catholic men, but he washed the feet of both men and women and washed the feet of Christians and Muslims and people of no faith. It was, I think, a very vivid 
example to the mission of the church. We are very happy in celebrating uh, the gift of the Eucharist and the gift of the priesthood uh, tonight. We find it much harder to get our hearts and our minds around the Lord's commandment. Do you understand, he says, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example that you may copy what I have done to you. And I don't believe for a moment that the Lord Jesus intended that to be a liturgical reenacting of what he did. It's meant to be the heartbeat of our Christian lives. That example of loving service to all people, not just those who might count as our own or people like us or people who think like us or people who believe like us, but simply to serve because serving is the Lord's command. As he the master has done, so should we. And so our minds, our thoughts, our hearts go out tonight to those who are doing just that, who are giving lives of service and of love to our world, who are serving friend and foe alike, who are serving people like us and people unlike us. So as we pray the Mass tonight, with that example of the Lord Jesus before us, and that loving example, I think, that Pope Francis gave us at the start of his ministry as the Bishop of Rome. If we find that we have boundaries in place as to who we will accept or not accept, who we will love, who we will not love, let's ask the Lord, as we celebrate this great mystery of love, to help us gradually to take down those walls, to dismantle those boundaries and to reach out simply because that is what the Lord would have us do, because that is the power which will transform the world, not people locked behind the walls of their own certainties, their cold and sometimes confrontational beliefs, that we be people rooted and grounded in love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're now going to see a short reflection that's been prepared because we would at this point normally have the washing of the feet uh, during our liturgy. Uh, so hopefully this just gives just two or three minutes uh, for us to ponder uh, on the mystery of what the Lord asks that we do and what we be about.
So, united with the church around the world, on this holy night, we bring our prayers to God. For Pope Francis and Bishop Terry, may their ministry, rooted and grounded in love of God, made visible in Jesus, be strengthened by the Eucharist we share. Lord, in your mercy, you are there. For all in civil authority, internationally, nationally and locally, and especially for those making decisions around healthcare, may they have wisdom and courage that they need. Lord, in your mercy, you are for our parish community, and for all the families who live within our parish boundary, we pray especially for those families who are encountering hard times because of this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, you are we pray for those in financial difficulty and for those who have lost work. Lord, in your mercy, you we pray for all who are sick and are in our city's hospitals and nursing homes and for those at home. We pray for all who are working in the NHS in any capacity. We ask God's blessing on them. Lord, in your mercy, you we remember those who have died, those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries are around this time. We pray that they may see God face to face and we remember also those who grieve and mourn, that they may be comforted. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. we take a moment to bring our own prayers to God. We ask Mary, Our Lady, to join our prayers to us as we say, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving God, we ask that you hear these and all the prayers we bring to your presence on this holy night. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayers we say at this point to Mass echo those prayed by the Lord Jesus himself at the Last Supper. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for it is through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for it is through your goodness we have received fruit of the vine and the work of human hands become for us our spiritual drink. And so, sisters and brothers, let us pray together that this, your sacrifice and mine, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Mass this evening is being offered for the repose of the soul of Eileen and Bill Parker. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, 
For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down upon them, like the dew fall, your spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that sharing in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Terence Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Eileen and Phil, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in heaven, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold who takes away our sins and the sins of all the world. Blessed those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This is my body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. So now we make together our act of spiritual communion. Again, if you would just simply repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. 
I love you above all things and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in Holy Communion, please come anew into my heart. I unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be parted from you. Amen. So were we in normal times at this point in the liturgy, we would have the procession with the Blessed Sacrament from the sanctuary of the church through uh, into here, uh, to the altar of, of repose, in a time of watching and of prayer. We gather again tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m for the celebration, the commemoration of the Lord's Passion. A point I make every year at this point uh, is that the liturgy tonight does not end with the blessing as would normally be the case. And the liturgy tomorrow does not begin with the sign of the cross as would normally be the case. Because from now through until the end of the Easter Vigil, we are held in God's time. This is all one liturgy, but three different moments of that one liturgy. So try, if you can, to find some time and space just to ponder the beautiful gift of God's love given to us in the saving death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus so that we can be set free to love, so that we can be strengthened and commissioned to love this poor world of ours that's in need of so much help. I still have going round in my heart and mind those words of Pope Francis uh, at the Urbi Torbi blessing um, two weeks ago now, a week ago, two weeks ago, where he said in his address, how can we expect to be healthy in a world that is so sick? How can we expect to be healthy in a world which is so sick? So maybe to ponder how we can help in that process of healing the world through the small choices and decisions that we make about how we use the world's resources. But thank you very much for being here this evening. We're going to um, have the concluding prayer and then uh, leave the altar because, as I've just said, there is no blessing to follow the Mass today. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so may we enjoy his banquet for all eternity, he who lives and who reigns, forever and ever. Amen. I wish you a peaceful and a happy night.